to the liver. Um, we're, we need to pray for her and, and her family. Uh, so I need to add that to the prayer request list. I forgot that long ago. Anyway, so many things happening. October is a busy month. Don't forget, at the end of the month, we have our Oktoberfest, uh, which is a, is a great time in the afternoon, 6 to 8 p.m. for the families. Uh, again, um, it involves foods, hot dogs, cupcakes, games, and playing. So what is it? That's on Sunday the 31st, that evening. We'll have church that morning. And okay. There's sign-ups out there. It's the same, you know, the uh, different toss. We still need candy. Yeah. Huh? That was just something we was doing tonight, try to keep the kids involved in that activity instead of just roaming the parking lot. So. Yeah, we're whipping up on each other. Yeah, we was trying to break some of that down. So, um, yes, it's 5.30 to 6. Yeah, if we could just if we could just get somebody to stand there and kind of just say, you know, no, it's just like some of the little kids don't even know how to play games, right? I mean, some of them, they don't. Yes, we do all that. We do, yeah, we're, we're working on it. We don't have everything in place yet, but you know, in our vast portfolio. Anyway, so we're thinking about tying Danny to a stick and making a pinata out of that, but we haven't got... No, I'm sorry. He's like, why do y'all pick on me for it? I was trying to give Butch a break, you know what I'm saying? But, no, the main thing is a lot of the kids just don't, they just really don't, they don't know how to play volleyball. You know, they're not that old yet. So it's it's more of just a, trying to have some controlled activities as anything else. So if you can, come. How many kids are there? Wasn't as many tonight, I don't think. But anyway, uh, Deborah has like 46 grandkids. She can, she can, 43, so she can help you with that. So. Anyway, tonight, to get to some Bible while all this is going on as well, if you'll turn back to, well, first of all, I just want you to think about this passage of Scripture. And while, while I'm reading it to you, I would like for you to turn back briefly just to Exodus 3. Um, and... <clears throat> Tonight we're going to transition a little bit. We've been talking about confidence in Christ, and we finished up talking about Moses last week and all the excuses and all the things, how God prepared him, called him, encouraged him to go into uh, or to become who he was, right? So we kind of use that as a parallel of how God calls to you, prepares you. Uh, but I also I want to kind of pull this in a little different direction to start talking about steps of strength. And two Sundays ago uh, I spoke on... Uh, forgiveness um, and I got a lot of comments to the sermons because I think forgiveness for us is a very difficult one to deal with uh, and I'm not going to try to be your psychiatrist at all uh, if you want to read books on psychiatry that go but as a pastor it's important that we understand that we forgive ourselves because it definitely limits us from being witnesses in Christ <coughs> And in Exodus, there's a very good example of that, and we're going to talk about it in just a minute. But the scripture I want you to hang on to tonight is Matthew 18, 21 and 22. And this was, I believe, from last Sunday. It said, Then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him? Everybody knows the answer to that one, right? He said, about seven times. And Jesus said to him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. Now, we got into this, like I said, a couple Sundays ago and talked about the fact that God was really saying what? Just you just forgive, forgive yeah. right? How hard is that, right? That's the dumb one. So, again, when you really think about it, maybe it's just where I'm coming from, but when we talk about the confidence of Christ, and this is what we were talking about in the confidence of Christ, was what knocks us down in our lives, and then how long do we stay down from the issue, right? The test, the trial, be it health, uh, be it financial, be it family, we get tested, right? But in all that, it's important that we get back up and keep going because we realize that we are a child of God. And I think that's also very important to remember that when you get saved, we use the words, but when you get saved, you start out as a child. Now, many of us are 50 and 40 and 60 and 70 and 20 and 30. We're not children per se anymore. And I think that sometimes that really doesn't work to our benefit because we forget as new Christians that we are what? Children's. Children's. Bad English. Really bad English. Children's. We be children's, right? We're child of God. We're growing in God. Uh, and in that, we need to learn how to grow, right? Now, we think of forgiveness a lot of times like, I forgive you, right? I, I've offended you, I forgive you, or you've offended me, I forgive you. But forgiveness is a broader word. It's forgiving of debt, right? 
You can forgive a debt. We can forgive what we've done, right? To forgive ourselves. And I think for me, that's the one I really want to look at. Uh, probably won't get to it all tonight, but that's the one I really want to think about is that the importance of forgiving ourselves, right? Why did Christ give us grace and forgiveness? He knew we were going to sin. Mm -hmm. What happens when we don't do what? Forgive ourselves. Get farther away from God. Right. It continues to build and build and build. Now, in that tonight, I wanted to take you to this, remind you of what I've been trying to drive at about our actions. What's, what, when we say of being a child of God, growing in Christ means that I'm trying to come into Christ. I'm trying to become a better Christian, better walk with Christ. So as a child, I have to learn. I have boo-boos. I fall down. I get up, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, child of God, regardless of age, mm -hmm. right? Sometimes you drop your king in church, right? Yeah. <laughs> told you, Butch. It's just in there forever. <laughs> Oh, it's probably in the minutes, but now. Oh, it's in the it's in the tape, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> yeah, it's in there. <laughs> but the question we always are asking ourselves as we grow through is what possible benefit does my actions or comments have to do with supporting the goals of Christ? I became a Christian, right? Yeah. Who said that? Everything. 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 But the question is, how do we learn to ask ourselves of that? over and over again, that question, to continually to put that up, right? What benefit is it to me? Or what benefit is it to God? Tough one, right? It really is, right? I mean, it's honest. That's, that's the battle that we're under. Mark 12, 31 said, Love the Lord our God with all our hearts, with all our mind, souls, all our mind, and with all our strength. Everybody achieve that every day? I'm the only one? Anyway, Remember also, and I'm just kind of building a little bit before we just jump right into this. Remember also that how important it is to remember that he doesn't come for perfection or purity, right? Because if he did, but that much more is in how important is the word forgiveness becomes, right? Because of the imperfection and because of the impurity, it's critical that we understand forgiveness. And not just Barney forgiving Cindy or Barney forgiving me, but each of us forgiving ourselves, which means we truly step away from the debt, right? Mm -hmm. And that's such a burden because many times we say the words, mm -hmm. but we don't truly forgive, mm -hmm. right? right? And more importantly, we don't truly forgive ourselves. So when you look at Exodus tonight, and this is just a quick example, but think about, we, we, we talked about this, when Moses, when Christ or God called to Moses, Moses did not want to go, right? No. Mm -hmm. Surely you don't already have a question. Oh, uh, yes. As a matter of fact, I do. <laughs> <laughs> it has to do with the self-forgiveness. You know, we can accept Christ's forgiveness of us. Uh, and, and that is a very reassuring sensation that I've personally experienced. I have a very difficult time forgetting what I've done in the past. And not feeling um, remorse for it. Okay. And, and as a result, you know, there's a, a potentially guilt and a, a lack of forgiveness for it. Well, that's, then you went full circle back to where we started. You're not forgiving yourself then. Well, because to forget, to forgive, and to say I remember means that I'm growing in Christ because it would tell me what? I'm not going to do it. I'm trying not to do that again because I remember what it felt like, right? Mm -hmm. So... That's a prime example of the very example I'm talking about. Either we forgive or we don't forgive. It, there's not an in-between. There's not a happy-go-lucky. You can't, you can't say, God, forgive me, and then pick it back up and take it with you. You can learn from it. Absolutely learn from it. Uh, good example. Let me, let me just give you this right quick. Uh, think about this story right here. Let me jump a little bit further. I'm going to go back. Don't worry. I'm going back to Moses in just a minute, but I want to share this story with you. It was a little bit further than I was going, but... Okay, so there's two brothers that go to the store. I'll just give you the, 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 the synopsis of the story. There's two brothers that are going to the store. They're young boys. One's 13, one's 10. They're going to the store. They buy some turpentine. They're going to build, uh, I forget what they were doing. They're going to build a mall or something they needed. They had saved, the older boy had saved to buy this turpentine. It was a special turpentine because it was purple in color. Have you ever seen it? Yeah. It's a little bit more expensive than the clear stuff. On the way home, the younger brother wanted to carry the bottle. What happened? Dropped it. 
Now, the younger brother said, I know that he forgave me. My older brother, I know that he forgave me, right? They went back to the store, couldn't buy the purple, had enough money to buy the turpentine. But when they left the store, who carried the bottle home? The older brother. The older brother. You see my point? Mm -hmm. The words are there. Mm -hmm. The act is there. But he really didn't forgive the younger brother, did he? No. Now, there's more to that story because the younger brother continued with that for many years, carrying that around with him because he realized that his brother never really, really trusted him again, never really gave him for. See, and there's the difference. When God forgives us, if God forgives us, right, mm -hmm. there's a key word in there that he has to replenish to us, right? Mm -hmm. Trust. Mm -hmm. So it's not just an act of forgiveness. It, it, it is the true reality that he forgave you. Why? Because he's already bore the sins. He's already bore the punishment of what you're asking forgiveness for. Many times we say the word, but do we truly let it go? The reason, go back to Exodus again for me, or if you're still there, I'm, I'm the one roaming around. Exodus, really, uh, what I want to refer back to is in Exodus 3, uh, Moses made the excuse of why he couldn't be, uh, he couldn't go. Let me find it for you right quick. Exodus 3.11, I think is where it's at. It was the first time he made the excuse. Give me Exodus. Exodus 3.11. Yeah, I said, but Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh, that I should bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? So in that basic statement, there's more going on there, but the basic statement is, Moses is saying, who am I? Mm -hmm. Now, and we brought this up last time. Go back to, when you, don't, don't go back, but just think about it. When you go back to Exodus 2, what happened? Moses killed what? Oh, An Egyptian, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, here's the deal. Did Moses not want to go in front of Pharaoh because he wasn't worthy, able, or capable? Or did he not want to go in Pharaoh because he had never forgiven himself for what he did, nor had he ever dealt with what he had did, right? So was his fear to go in front of Pharaoh and not disappoint God or was it his fear to go in front of Pharaoh and get caught for his previous sin is that making sense mm -hmm. you see when we don't let something go mm -hmm. then we're caring when we don't because forgiving part of us when we're talking to us when we're talking about forgiving what are we doing with the act but what is that called you're dealing with it mm -hmm. when you come to salvation in Christ what are you really doing you're going face to face with God saying what? Deal with my sinner. sinner. Yeah. This is who I am. I finally realized, or I finally one or the other, because I think sometimes we realize who we are way before we ever come to Christ, right? That you, you are. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. See, in this case, we don't know the story here. We don't know. I'm, I'm using it as an example, but Moses had this in his past. So when God came to him and he said, Joe, I want you to come and do this for me, the first thing was to say, Whoa. That puts me back in Egypt. That puts me back in front of Pharaoh. That puts me back into my past that I have not forgiven or forgotten. So now, uh, my testimony, my witness that I could be used for God is highly questionable. Not because of God, but because I haven't dealt with my past. Now, that's just one example, but you see how beautiful that yeah. little analogy is? See how when we hold on, mm -hmm. and Moses said, you know, if he had dealt with this now, you said, well, tell me, he might have been put to death. He might, I, I don't know, right? But we know one thing. As far as we know, I mean, nothing ever came from the, the act, right? But he had to be forgiven. Why? God used him, right? But more importantly, what I really want you to look at the fact is that when we hold on to things, even the smallest of things, and we don't truly let them go, sooner or later they become a firewall between you and your walk with Christ. Mm -hmm. So to forgive, yes. To forgive and not forget, yes. But to not forgive yourself totally and let it come back. It, it takes away your <clears throat> boldness and your weakness. Well, it's, your, it's what Satan holds above your head, right? Because mm -hmm. as soon as you take that step, what, what does he say? Remember you? <laughs> You're going to tell these people about Christ? You are? <laughs> right? That's the way he works, right? Yeah. Your past. You're going to take your past, the things that you've done in your life, and you're going to teach a Sunday school class? You're going to witness to somebody? 
That's because see, that's what Satan needs. He just needs that little bit of leverage. Mm -hmm. See, he doesn't need to keep you lost. He just needs to keep you confused, right? Because yeah. if he can keep you, to, that's why it is so ultimately so important that you, is it hard? I think it's tremendously hard, Bert. I really do. Well, that, that, I, do. I wasn't saying it. I don't accept the forgiveness, and technically, I guess I forgive myself for some of the things that I've done. Um, but, but just, you know, remembering them and then feeling bad about them is uh, kind, of, kind of brings about uh, sensations of guilt, I guess, uh, for whatever Well, I still look simple. And I, you know me. I'm, I'm going to be simple. But when I look at something and say, if I put my hand in the fire and I burn myself, right? If I put my hand in the fire again and again and again, they have to put a little white coat around you, take you someplace, and give you medication, right? But we learn. That's how we learn. As a child, you remember children? That's how we learn, right? I mean, you're, you you learn. You fall down. You, you find out. If you run real fast and fall down on concrete, you skin your knees. After a while, you either get too far, too too old to run, or you hopefully you quit running on concrete, right? You fall Or you you know. But we did. Let's see. In that, um, so that I guess what I can say is there's a there's the. Um, I really believe a lot of times we're reluctant to give and accept forgiveness. And I'm not just so much talking about to each other mm -hmm. as I am to ourselves. And that really ultimately is the concern because, like I said, I'm not your psychiatrist, but as your pastor, it's something that does need to get fleshed out because it weakens the community of the church mm -hmm. because it makes each one of us that much weaker mm -hmm. in Christ, right? Because we're harboring things that we need to let go. And again, here, listen to this story. Uh, Reality Magazine, February the 15th, 2006. Med I may not pronounce her name right. Medissa Hunley, a gospel singer, was on the 12th finalist on American Idol. When she Mandisa. met the judges... Mandisa. 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 Okay, Mandisa. what you said. Mandisa. <laughs> Mandisa. Mandisa Hunley. Oh, you know who she was. Cool. Uh -huh. I haven't watched it in a long time. When She's she met good. the judges, Simon Cowell, Paula Abdul, and Randy Jackson... To find out if she had made it through the next round of competition, she was met with a stinging comment from Simon Cowell. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> Eyeing her, who, who was heavy set, Simon asked, do we have a bigger stage this year? Mm. When she entered the room later to learn the judge's verdict, what's her name? Mandisa. Mandisa looked right at Simon and said, Simon, a lot of people want me to say a lot of things to you, but this is what I want to say. Yes, you heard me. And I cried, and it was painful. But well, I want you to know that I have forgiven you, and here's the key part, and that you don't need someone to apologize to forgive somebody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. And if I figured Jesus could die so that all of my wrongs would be given, I can certainly extend the same grace to you, and I wanted you to know that. You see, later in that story, Simon went back and apologized to her. And they went on about their business, right? He accepted her apology. She accepted his. But my more concerned part is for us to realize that sometimes we need to apologize. And sometimes we need to apologize to ourselves and let some things go. The, the, the person in here, I think, is more of the, of the forgiveness issue. Because as we've talked about, many times we desire to forgive somebody that they don't even remember why they were, well, why? they didn't even know they offended you, right? And if you've seen this show and you've seen Simon Cowell, I bet you 50%. It was just another one of his crack comments, right? He makes. He, I mean, I'm not. I'm not condoning his uh, his actions, but the way he treats people is pretty much with some level of sarcasm, right? So anyway, neither here nor there. But to the importance of it, the need to have to apologize. Now, Bernie, I don't see you telling me that you hurt me and I cried. I don't see you telling me that, but we can try. I don't know if you've got to get to that level. If you did. <laughs> I don't know that we have to get that level, but the main issue is, is forgiveness given, past removed, and moving on. Again, scripturally speaking, Christ bore all our sins. Every one of them. So exactly where you said, which you often do for me, you exactly say where most of us said is we don't truly often forgive ourselves on everything. When God said what? Christ said what? Give it up. It's gone. He that, that ability to walk through that door and say, I'm forgiven, and to keep on walking, when you know people are going, I, I, I know sin. It goes back to the same thing. We won't ask for forgiveness because we don't want to give it. We think 
lot of times we, we uh, do things and we won't commit it to ourselves that we've done that. We just put it keeps it in the back of our mind. That also hinders you because to get saved, you've got to admit that you're a sinner. And you've got to be wooed by the Holy Spirit for Him to draw you to that spot where you surrender all. Same thing. You get once God's forgive you and you can't forgive yourself. You've got to allow all that to be gone too. Mm -hmm. You can't just keep it all it's all tied in. The other night he was preaching on that and then we sang this there was this beautiful song that I forget what it was. But during that time I forgave myself. Right here, in this spot. God flushed me with his precious spirit and filled me with a spirit of joy that I've been missing for a long time because I forgave myself. And this week, I've been more bolder in my preaching to witnessing to God. I didn't go in with it. Well, with my lifestyle, should I be able to say this here? I went in bold because... I have forgiven myself, I knew God forgave me, so therefore I can do the work for God. But it took a long time to get to, get to that point that you can truly forgive yourself because you've got to forget it to forgive yourself. Well, there's also a, a level of metamorphosis that has to occur in a Christian life to where you become that Christian witness. Yeah. Right, folks? Right. And this is a tough one, too. Yeah. This is in that forgiveness area. But there's also that, there's the church, Tim, there's the work team. There's the buddies at the lake team. Right? I'm just giving examples. Huh? Part of it is, is it the forgiveness that's required, or do we have a different person that lives on Monday through Saturday that comes to church on Sunday? So that's a tough one to deal with right there. Isn't it? Is it the same walk that I have? It's growing in Christ. It's growing in Christ. It's growing in Christ. Because the way I think of it now, the way I used to think of it, why would I not ask for forgiveness? Right? Because I've seen what it is to have to hide and to carry things around with me. Right? Huh? So if you have it and you're carrying it around with you and then you realize that Christ gives you an absolute forgiveness and you can step away from it and you leave this, why would I not want to live, and this is that part he talks about, in freedom, why would I not want to live in freedom of Christ? Forgiven of my mistakes. Why would anybody want to harbor their mistakes? Now, mentally, this is where Satan comes back into it. Why? Because he wants you to stay in that mm, creamy center of the Oreo, right? Just feel good, looks good. And this is, again, this is the tough part. If you're living double standard life, then your willingness to ask for forgiveness is what? It ain't there. Why would you ask for forgiveness? It's something that's working for you, right? I like this today. It is that challenge that we go back and forth on. So when I walk into the office and they go, do, do they? Let me rephrase it. Do they know I'm a Christian? Do they, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They, right. They sh absolutely should. They you Is know. There enough evidence to convict you. <laughs> well, like the other day, the cowboy tickets came out in our vice president call. He said, "I know you're not going to go because it's on a Sunday." I didn't even get a chance to say anything. I was like, "Well, I know I'm not going to go, but that's a whole different sermon for a different day." But I realized that he realized after I hung up, I like I picked up on that. Like there, no, I'm not going to spend my day. They they figured it out, right? So no, Thursday game. You know Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't thought about that when I had to call him back. Right? Can I get the Christmas tickets? No. Um, but no, it, it's it's that part of our lives. This is that part that's hard for us to deal with because this is what we're dealing with. Can I get this out? The forgiveness that because again, I think a lot of times we think about the the, the forgiveness of things that. Uh, insults, injuries, scars, things that we're carrying around. And many times, and we talked about this, many times when you hang on to those things, all they really become is fester blocks for why you can't do something. I ain't, I'm not going to that church because Butch goes to that church and he offended me back in 1963. I'm not going to that church because I knew Danny. I knew Danny back when he was a cop. Now he's a, he's a deacon at that church. You see, they haven't seen a lot of... You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Right? Now, the responsibility, he needs to be living like... Christian, right? 
Hmm? That's the burden that we carry back to God, right? The testimony that we have. But those are the things, and we use them in other ways. We use those excuses in other ways. Well, I'm not going to that family reunion because I can't associate with that family anymore. I'm not going to listen to Deborah anymore because they're just too goody two shoes. They just talk about God all the time. I knew her back when. But that's part of what people hold on to, and they don't necessarily forgive because they don't really want to. But really, tonight, I'm more concerned about what you do as a person, a person that holds on and really doesn't realize that you need to ask for forgiveness. It is an act of true Christianity. It's what supports us. Um, I've got one more example. Yes, ma'am. You, you might have said it, and I just can't remember, but, you know, sometimes we have something that's so bad in our past that we are feel that is so very bad, and we just keep asking for forgiveness and keep asking forgiveness, and you know, and bringing it up over and over again when God, it, He's forgiven it, mm -hmm. um, and it and it does hold you back from uh, from being that witness and and being involved. And I think it's a, a process, you know, that you need to work through that and remember the Scripture that He does forgive and He forgets. You know, once you ask for forgiveness with that right heart. You know, and I think it keeps a lot of people uh, down because they're just, you know, it's really God forgiving me, and they just keep asking and keep asking. So. Yeah, I kind of see it from the standpoint, you, you get saved, and God says, let's go. Yeah. He says, I've given you the church. The church is supposed to be your support, one of your supports. I've given you the Holy Spirit, right? And I've given you the Bible. Mm -hmm. So I've given you the playbook, I've given you a, a coach, and I've given you a team. Mm -hmm. You got saved, let's go. Hang on one second. Let's go. And what, 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 what's dangerous words do you hear? I'm working on myself. As soon as I get this fixed, <laughs> Tim couldn't fix it. You can't. That's the whole point. You can't fix it. That's what he's been trying to tell you since the beginning. You do not have the ability to fix what the problem is because the problem is a sin problem that lives in your heart, soul, and mind. Without Christ, you can't protect yourself, change yourself, and grow yourself out of Christ, right? And it is a spiritual maturity issue. Right? Well, I started to say, it really is a point to where you come to the point that you really realize, again, like I said a while ago, why would I want to live like this when I can live, I can get up and go, I, I hate to say it, it's kind of like the old Saturday Night Live, I'm a good person. <laughs> I love me, you love me, we all look right. Mm -hmm. But it is. Yeah. I mean, I, we deal with, do we feel, yes, we fall down, we, we get back up. Allowing ourselves to get rid of this gunk that's hanging on to us, right? Stress, financial stress, families, kids, jobs, all that stuff that, you know, gets you what, tired, exhausted. Hmm? Things get said, makes you grumpy. Grumpy is a good word, right? Things happen, life happens. Uh, tragedy, illness, just about the time you think you're getting to this point, something happens. They say, oh, well, you got to do this. And, you know, just dealing with it, right? And then we get, right? But the point is, we can step away from that realizing, child of God, child of God, child of God, I'm going to heaven. I've got to work here, endure here, live here, but I'm not staying here. It's not where I'm from. Um, um, yes. D, uh, D. Well, what in the world was Jesus thinking when he told the disciples, forgive them 70 times 7? Didn't he know we were going to be really complicated? I think he did. I think he knew we were going to struggle. Do you? <laughs> I, I think he did. I, I, That's why he said, love your neighbor as yourself, too. Yeah, he gave a lot of instructions. He, he gave a lot of instructions. And let's just face it, come on, really? I mean, love my neighbor? Mama, forgive me, said, I think I'm way old before I'm For yourself, for myself, I've exhausted that, yes. Yeah, but when I was thinking about it as a child of God, think about it. The, the, we, we were just forgiven. Forgiven from what? And this is the tough one. What's the, it starts with an E. Forgiven from what? Everything. Everything. You see, and that's where I was when you were there a while ago. See, a lot of times we come to the cross, we get up and accept salvation, and we don't realize that children of God, we were just forgiven everything. It's all been paid for. All of it. But like I said, so many times it's symbolic, but we pick it all up, we put it all back in our little satchel, and we go home with it, and then we keep it, right? We keep it, and we keep it, and we keep it, until some point that we begin to realize, why am I hanging on to this? 
That's why I said in Matthew 18, if it offends you, Ron, I, 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 you offended me. I need to tell you that you offended me because I need to move on, right? And then Ron probably says, I don't even really remember who you are. So, yeah, what, what did I do? When did I do that? Right? But we, it, it's the limit. It's that separation. We talked about this Sunday night about sin. What's sin? We can itemize our sins. Let's get on it. Oh, cussing, drinking, smoking, uh, uh, impure thoughts. Take your list. Get on. Get the Ten Commandments. Get, but the main one that is our limitation is our separation of our walk from Christ. It could be a job. It could be something. It doesn't have to be what we label, quote unquote, what we Baptists especially we call sin, right? No, it's hmm? disobedience from God. It's when God says to you, Brevis, I need you to do this, and you say what? I don't think so. That's just as disobedient as anything else you could do to God because God said, that's just like with Moses, I need you to do this. Moses said, no, why? Well, as far as I'm concerned, he was harboring something from the past that he thought that could be his guilt trip, right? This could be the end of Moses. Moses was in the man state, right? Where would you be? I don't want to go, oh, no, I don't, mm -mm, no. I don't want to do that because, I, you know, they may know what, right? There's the deal. I don't want to go back over there. Why? Because when the last time I was there, I'd acted inappropriate as a Christian. Huh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I got a little too carried away. I let my mouth run off. I said a few things I shouldn't have said. Right? Instead of going back and saying, you know what? I'm sorry. I'm human. I made a mistake. Now, to the human, to the natural world, they're going to look at you, Bernie, and say, what is, what? You yeah. said, you, what, you, you lost your tongue and you cursed. Is that what you're saying? That's it. Yep. Or they probably wouldn't say it that politely. but <laughs> Right? <laughs> to them... It's not, but the point is, it's not for them. It's for you to let that go so that the next time that you walk up into that circle of men or women or whatever it is that you can say, hey, can I tell you about Christ? Or can you just be yourself as a Christian? You're going to fall. He wouldn't have gave us forgiveness. Uh, in Isaiah 55, 7, it said, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord and he will have mercy on him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Oh, hallelujah. You know what that abundantly means? Seven times 70. Every time. Now, is there some effort on our part? Yes, it says to repent, which means to turn away, to step away from. Some harder than others? Absolutely. Right? It's like we, have to, we laughed about the ice cream deal. The ice cream battle is lost in the aisle at Brookshire's. It's not lost when you get it home in the freezer. That might be the second battle, but the first battle was when you went to the little frosty counter and you couldn't see through it, so you opened the door. Uh, uh, and you act like you can't figure out which one of them all, so you take No, the battle's lost right there, right? As soon as you take it and put it in your carton, you know you're going to eat it, because once you get it home late at night, yeah, it calls to you, them. right? Some of the time I get it freezer, I'm already guilty so I can go ahead and eat it. You might as well. You can ask for forgiveness in the morning because it's over with. But the battle's lost is in the will of the mind. The will of the mind says, I'm going to buy this now. If you buy it, you're going to take it home. And I don't care how strong you are, sooner or later you're going to find yourself with a spoon and that carton of ice cream. I'm not lying because I'm looking at every one of you and you're smiling because you know it's the truth. The battle is lost. So what's the deal? If I don't bring it home, so I hate to say it, sometimes as humans, we need to realize there are certain things in our life that we just have to say, you know what, I'm not going to bring that home. Because if I bring that home or if I go there, right? So part of, part of, 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 of a spiritual growth is also realizing I can't put myself in that spot. Yeah, but the store notices that, so they put the peas uh -huh. and carrots right next to ice cream. <laughs> no, they just rename it healthy stuff. You know, like you know, it's not really ice cream; it's birthday cake ice cream. And everybody knows birthday cake's less fattening than ice cream. So, in First John one nine, it says, "If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness." Time and time and time again, he tells us, I will forgive you abundantly. I will forgive you of your sins. I, what's the word? Forgive you. Forgive you. Forgive yourselves. I mean, there is no absolute, I mean, there's so much as you get older and older, so much more to let go of, right? Yes. Well, one of the things that Paul says in there is, uh, you know, all things are permissible, but not all things are possible. 
There you go. And, that's the and, same thing with ice cream, right? Yeah. And, and, well, I mean, that's uh, think about the freedom of, of that. You know, I mean, if you can look at your life and say, you know, yeah, that's just not doing me any favors. You know, uh, it, it's a much easier forgiveness for the past. Well, it's also a great forgiveness for us as relationships, right? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times we harbor things inside of our relationships that just over time kill or numb, right, the relationship. And that's the same. It's You know, when God created us, and God created in Genesis 3, uh, or first and second, and then created first chapters first and second, and created man and then woman and then said to one flesh, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, the, the repetition of our lives, our relationships, are all based in the same format, right? They're all based in God. So those relationships, if there's the same tendency between us to impact each other negatively or to grow numb because we won't let things go, it's the same relationship we have with Christ. And as we know in relationships, the more things that we pack in between us, the more Satan has a chance to play in separation. Same thing with Christ. He can't Remember, and always, and this is, sometimes I think we look at, we micro ourselves, which we do, we're people, we're humans, but look at the big picture of the fact, Satan cannot get to God. So what did he attack? What does he attack every time? Adam and Eve, Tim and Barb, right? Yes. Miss Joe, anybody that can, he can get to, anybody he can find a weak spot in the armor, some spot there, right? Well, I don't know if I, I, was, offended. I was offended by that. And Right? Tink, 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 tink. It's like the eggshell, right? Tink, 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 tink. Until it's cracked. If I can get it cracked, then I can get into it. If I can get into it, then I can infest it. If I can infest it, then I can destroy it. Isolation, separation is where he comes. It's where he plays. That's why it's so important that we keep that stuff out in front of us. Revis, you offended me. Again and again, I keep asking you to stop offending me. No, it's, it's healthy, right? Again, as your pastor, not your psychiatrist. Go see your psychiatrist. They're probably smarter than I am. But spiritually speaking, mm -hmm. applying this to our lives personally, I need to let this go. i got to let this go. And again, you, you ask yourself, uh, again, the segue, Barney, thank you. Um, again, Peter, how many times? Seven times 70. Applying some point in there that if you keep doing this, and I use the wrong word a couple of Sundays, it's still bugging me. I said the word dumb. But, you know, it's like if somebody comes and borrows money from you 86 times and you keep handing them money and they never pay you back. At some point, he gave you a strong mind and powerful and wisdom to say what? No. I can't loan you any more money. Let's look for another solution, right? I need to help you find a job. Uh, I can send you to somebody else. But he gives us that ability to reason and to think through things. We just don't... It's not like you just stand there and go, here you go, Rivas, here you go, Rivas, here you go, Rivas, here you go. Thank you, thank you, thank you. No, that's not what he's talking about. He's talking about applying some 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 thought to the process as well, right? Anyway. Okay. So again, closing in that, like I said, just remind you of this. I would borrow some money from you if you have it. <laughs> he always supersedes it with the gift of grace that provides us with the ability to forgive and to be forgiven. Like the young lady said in the story with, with uh, the American Idol, if God allows me the grace and forgiveness, who am I? Hmm? Always one to one big guy. Huh? Always one to one big guy. <laughs> but in that, always remember though, sometimes when you're saying, I'm, I'm, Joe, I'm asking you, I'm, giving you I'm, I'm, I'm forgiving you of this, I don't need you to accept it. I just need to give it. Why? I'm trying to keep this clean. Right? I need to keep this part clean. If I keep this clean, that's my. this is my job. I, he gave Barb the job of trying to keep me and her clean, but he just gave me this job. <laughs> this is all I got. And, this, and I can't handle this. That's why he gave me her, right? Now she has help. Then she drifts over, right? <laughs> anyway. Anyway, think about it. If I mean, seriously, think about it. Uh, think about those examples, if you would. Anything in closing tonight? Yes, ma'am. There you go. I have no problem forgiving other people, and I don't care what you think about me. I'm the Lord's child. There you go. Amen. 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 I decided that for extenuation, so. Anyway, anything else in closing tonight? All right. I think I, think I hear him running out there. There he is. Come in. We were just talking about you. Come on up front. 
No, I'm just kidding. Anyway, God bless y'all. God bless y'all. Um, Miss Betty, would you dismiss us tonight, sweet? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for this day that Y'all have a great week.